Now, if any of you are challenged with the consumer complaining about prices that have doubled, tripled, and even quadrupled on them, then you're really gonna love this session because today is all about the aberration, the closing aberration. Now, an aberration is a way of doing something that is familiar to ourselves. Closing has been going through, in my opinion, an aberration for a long time because while manufacturers and retailers have experienced with or experienced, pardon me, with uh, fixed price on pre-owned automobiles as well as manufacturers trying to fix their pricing on new automobiles. That's the aberration. I'm sure that we'll all agree the goal and the reason why we would want to try and do that is to close without negotiating. Because really, let's think about that. It wasn't all that long ago across your region, across your country, across the continent, across the world for that matter, that we actually did so, right? Yes, there was a time, now documented in our history books, when manufacturers and retailers sold at MSRP and consumers lined up to buy those products. So let's leverage some of what worked back in those days in today's market, because that wasn't all that long ago. For some of us, we remember it vividly to see if we can duplicate some of those results because I know we can. If you don't know my story, here's a brief, a very, very brief portion of what that all is going to include. But the bottom line is, I went from salesman to dealer principal like overnight. Seriously, overnight. It was, I was literally selling automobiles on Friday and Monday morning I was standing in the showroom of the Chrysler dealership. I, I, I had purchased it and that really is how it happened. Now, to this day, I'm still a registered dealer with OMVIC. I think I'm the only trainer that is a registered licensed dealer principal who has a lot and retails vehicles off of it. And that's how I test all of this stuff, by the way. So it's just not me dreaming it up and talking to others, hey, how are you doing it? Which is how so many average ordinary automobile sales trainers do it. I actually do it, practice it out there on the showroom floor. So that's how I can be so current with payments that have double, triple, and quadruple because we're experiencing it too. Now, Here's the funny thing with my story. I believe that Chrysler approved me to be a dealer principal because when they asked me, why should we consider you? I said, because I can sell cars, trucks, and SUVs. But from the very first day, the very first afternoon in the dealership, while all the big wigs were there, and keep in mind, I was 28 years of age, and that very day, that very afternoon, a customer walked in and wanted to know the price on a demo out front, a mild out demo that I had inherited and it was not in nice shape. And I went out there and sold that automobile. And I'm sure after they saw that happen, applying these tactics, this is the foundation of the entire system that you all are learning right here. This isn't hyperbole. This actually works. I'm sure that they said to themselves, well, if we're taking a chance on this guy, we just saw what he can do and it's done. And they drove away very confident. It did turn out to be an excellent experience. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I'm, I'm not disappointed that I don't have it anymore. I thoroughly enjoyed my training and teaching career and continue to do so. So closing, closing is a delicate and I even, you know what, I'm going to so, go so far as to say an unpleasant experience for most. Until the inventory shortage, even I would say, why can't shoppers just simply buy our products without the game of excuses? Objections, right? The inventory shortage taught us they will actually buy without negotiating. But I think you will all agree that we're slipping back to that because we're losing confidence I think in ourselves, not so much in the value of the product, but the customers beating us up. And it doesn't take, a, it doesn't take very many of them to convince us that our price is too much, especially if they're saying it over and over again. I mean, that's the skill of a master, isn't it? I mean, and so the closing aberration will take you from not knowing what to say to being confident that you don't have to sacrifice gross. You don't have to work any off shift hours. You don't have to be available all day long and all week long and coming in on your day off to make a better than average income. You don't need to do all that. High performers do it all the time automatically because 
When they're selling 15, 25, and 30 vehicles per month, there is no time to waste. So what we want to do with Closing Apparition is two things. Believe that every shopper is a buyer. And number two, speed the whole process up. Because in order for you to get to 15, 25, and 30 plus vehicles per month, you have to be more efficient with your time. And you know what? Here's the really neat part. Customers have told us for years, years and years and years, it takes too long to buy a vehicle. I just want to get it done. So let's learn to do what they want to get done. So the closing aberration starts with you selling like you did during the inventory shortage when you had little to no inventory where price was not an issue because there was another buyer coming around the corner if this one did not commit. Now, I know you don't have nearly that level of demand, but sales are up right across the board with every single manufacturer and many dealer groups and dealerships are reporting higher sales than last year. So we're on a growth curve. That means that the buyer, certainly while the inventory shortage was in play, buyers have read, heard, and seen how your lots are now filling with inventory. But way back then, they could see and they heard that you didn't have selection. And therefore, the stories are reality. And you need to learn how to tell that story in such a capacity that they will buy it and trust you and they will want to continue doing business with you. That's the perfect sales pitch. It's not about tricky closing lines. That's it's different. Your sales pitch is the hook, the story, and the offer. You need to hook them. And you've already done that, quite frankly. You've hooked them with the product. But what you can say to the customer that has fallen in love with the one that you're showing them is that we're actually in short supply of this one. And this is the offer for only dollars a day. You could be driving it tomorrow or even by the weekend. Now, it doesn't matter what you sell. You need to leverage that hook story and offer concept. That is the methodology that helps customers make this decision to buy, right? Like hard to believe, but that's what we're after. The results that it creates. And that is part of the closing aberration. Even ninja closers. You believe this. You must believe this with all your heart and soul that every shopper is a buyer because you build that bridge and ask them for commitment all the way through, which is the closing aberration. We start closing as soon as we meet them in the showroom. So what we need to keep in mind is where the buyer is in their shopping journey. So when we define closing as the act of finalizing the agreement, the agreement being the operative word, it's not simply closing the deal, finalizing it, ch you know, chiseling a price, knocking a price down. That's not what it's all about. Closing is, is the result of preparation, confirmation, and agreement to all the steps, all the activities to the sale. Doing so is just relying on closing at the end of the sale is how you set yourself up for disaster and why the deal falls apart. And if you've selected the right vehicle, you've got confirmation. That's the lion's share of the mistakes that I did, and I'll bet you are as well, when getting to yes. If you don't have confirmation, presenting the numbers, either at the interview, as soon as you meet and greet the customer, or during the walk around or during the demonstration drive, then how can you possibly know that the customer is going to take it if they haven't given you some indication that they will take it? And the best indication that they, they will take it is that they said, I'll take it.